Hey guys, welcome back. Now let us understand and talk about one of the most important core computer science topic, memory. This topic will not be considered during interviews or even for the discussion, but it's important for strong fundamentals. Memory is one important computer science topic that help you to visualize and understand other concept that we are going to discuss throughout the course. We are going to talk about data structures, we are going to talk about different algorithm and at every point of time you are going to visualize something with the help of memory. Before discussing any of the lecture content, let us talk about few basic concepts related to memory. So I hope everyone is aware here that we are working with something called memory that is used to store everything that we do in our program. So a memory is usually divided into different memory slot. One memory slot is equals to 8 bit and 8 bit is equals to 1 byte. So if you talk about memory, memory is divided into slots, slots are divided into bits and these bits combined together form a byte. One memory slot is equals to 1 byte. Now the interesting thing is everything we do on our system is usually depend on what type of system and operating system we are working. Either you are working with 32 bit or 64 bit. We are going to consider a different example with 32 bit itself because that's the most common one. If you understand about 32 bit, you can understand about 64 bit as well. So for the first thing is if you are working with 32 bit, so if I initialize any int in my program, it is going to take 32 bit. Now 32 bit means 4 byte. So that is, it is going to take four memory slot for that particular value. Suppose I'm taking a variable as vook and I'm storing a value as two. Now this particular value is going to be stored in our memory slots in 32 bit format. So this particular value is going to take four byte from our complete memory. Now let me draw a memory canvas so you can understand everything and visualize them in a much better way. So I'm taking this example as a memory canvas. Now each one of this is a memory slot. That means one byte slot. Combining all these four of them, we can store a particular value which I'm going to do as vook. Now when I store this value vook in this memory slot, I'm going to get a memory address in return. That means if I need to find this value again, I just need to visit this memory address. So if you are working with 16 GB or 32 GB or 64 GB of memory, there are chances that we are going to deal with few millions of memory slot. So this memory address is unique and our system track this value with the help of this particular memory address. Now this memory address are hexadecimal. So if I talk about memory address for this particular number, it will be represented as this complicated hexadecimal and the values that are stored inside this slot is in the form of binary. We will be talking about this in a few minutes, but let me get back to my canvas. Now here this memory canvas I'm taking as an example. You might see on internet diagram like this or maybe like this or maybe some other. Each individual have their own imagination. We just try to make things simpler to visualize. I'm taking this diagram so you can visualize four bytes all together. Now these four bytes should be back to back. That means if I've created a variable, it has to store in four bytes together. Also remember our values are stored in binary form. So our computer have to do some task at background. Now let's take another example so you can understand everything in a better format. Let me take a empty memory canvas and here I take a variable as vook and I have two values as two and three in the form of list. Now both these values are together. That means they have to be stored back to back. That means I'm going to store my value two in four byte, then three in four byte. And since they are in list, I have to store them back to back. So the first thing my system has to take care of that they have to find eight slot and they have to be all together. As I mentioned previously, every input that we give should be stored in binary form. So our system has to convert this value of two into binary and they have to convert this value of three into binary. 
remember this is one byte which is eight bit so i'm going to convert this two into eight bit and three into eight bit now once these are converted into binary let's store our value into eight continuous plot here if you don't know how to convert this into binary don't worry since computer is doing itself i'm just talking about this so you know what is happening behind the scene when we are creating a variable when we are working with array when we are working with any other data structure in future so here in this case our binary value was sufficient which is 8 bit was sufficient to store the value of 2 now we are going to store the value of 8 bit first then if we don't have any value for the next three bytes for this particular value we are going to leave them with zeros and then we are going to store the next value now you might be thinking why i am following left alignment that is it should follow 0 0 0 and then the values but here the concept of ndns comes into picture so that is related to internal ordering we have to follow that so we have to take our value first then if there is space left we are going to use 0 0 and 0 suppose instead of 2 you have a value of maybe 1 million so that means you cannot convert that value into 8 bit you need more bits so that's where your other 16 bits your other 24 bit your other 32 bits since we have four proper slot for this value is going to come into picture so these 8 bits 8 bits 8 bits 8 bits together combined can create a value itself next thing is we are going to store the value of 3 convert it into binary take the value and if the space is left after that use 0 0 and 0 so that's happened behind the scene and for each of our four bytes we have a memory address that help us to track each of our value now you might be thinking that if integer are stored like that how we are going to store strings so strings usually follow ascii code so if you remember in your computer science class if not do search about ascii codes so capital a has a value of 65 capital b has a value of 66 and keep following that now here is a quick question i create a new variable called super woo and i have five values inside it how many memory slots it require and how it is going to store in memory canvas try to pause this lecture draw inside your notebook or draw inside your rough notebook or whatever you want to do just try to understand it yourself so you are going to get better idea regarding this I hope that's done. So in future we are also going to talk about pointers for our linked list. So there is one amazing thing that this memory slot and these memory addresses can do. This memory slot can store memory address of other memory slot. For example I have a variable called superwoo and it has currently two values only. Remember I am taking this example for linked list. I know at this point of time you don't know anything about linked list but let's just talk about in terms of memory. So suppose you have these two values 2, 3. Now these two values are stored in our memory address and the next few spaces are already stored by some other variables. Now I add 3 more values for this particular variable. So that means we need 12 slots again. If we don't have space for all these 3 what we can do is we can create a pointer that means we can give a new memory address here and our system will understand that after all these values they need to point to this particular memory address and from there they can continue all the remaining values so i'm going to store half of my values here half of my values at this particular memory address and it is going to continue from this particular position so all my system is going to do is I gave two values first they store them at particular 8 memory slot. I now gave three more values we don't have space for these three values we store them somewhere else and use a pointer to tell our system that after these values we need to move towards this memory address. Remember your computer can access each and every memory slot very quickly. This particular operation don't require 
much time by your computer. It can access from first memory slot to last memory slot super quick without any delay. So I hope you are comfortable with memory topic right now. You don't need to dive deep but you should be familiar that there is something called memory canvas and we have limited amount of memory since we are using a hardware for this. Since we have limited amount of memory that means we have limited amount of memory slot and we need to take care of this. One memory slot is equals to 8 bit which is equals to 1 byte. If we are using 32 bit system for each value we are storing we are going to use 4 byte. Now these 4 byte combine that means all these slot create a memory address which is in the form of hexadecimal and the values which we store is in the form of binary. That's it. This is all the information that you should be aware regarding memory. In further lectures, we'll be discussing and understanding about different data structures and how they are stored in memory. And we will be also discussing about space complexity throughout this course. So you will get better understanding of this topic. I hope this lecture was helpful. Thank you for following this lecture. See you in the next one.